Okay, great. I think we're ready to get going. Thank you so much for joining us for today's webinar, NextGen SVN, a look behind the curtain with Subversion experts. Today's webinar is being presented by Assembla. Assembla is the world's only provider of enterprise cloud version control. Before I hand it over to our moderator, I would like to cover a few housekeeping topics. Today's webinar is being recorded. We will share a link with you after the event is complete. We welcome you to revisit the content and share it with your colleagues. We also invite you to make, to make comments and questions. Please look at the Q&A chat box on your screen, and if you think of a question for our speakers at any point, just type it in there, and we'll get those over to our panelists. Also, if you're on Twitter, we would like you, and you would like to live tweet any of the sound bites or helpful quotes from our panelists, please use hashtag NextGenSVN for tracking purposes. And with that, I'll hand it over to Jason Materna, Assembly CTO. Thanks, Rachel. Appreciate it. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, very excited today to talk about uh, Next Generation Subversion uh, by Apache. And uh, we've got a really great lineup uh, today on the panel. Um, so we've got a great agenda for the 60-minute session with the 15-minute uh, Q&A at the end. So like Rachel said, I encourage you uh, to post questions uh, as the session goes. Um, but before we get into it, uh, I'd love to do a roundtable introduction. Uh, like I said, we've uh, assembled uh, quite an interesting uh, cast of characters here, uh, experts in the subversion space from developers to end clients and uh, consultants and users. So um, with that, uh, Paul, why don't you uh, introduce yourself? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Jessic. Um, so I'm Paul Hammonds, uh, consultant for 30 years now. Um, a trunk-based development expert, I'll, I'll say about myself. I'm a long-term Subversion user and sort of many source control packages, in fact. I'm an Apache member, and I'm also launching a Subversion-based product today. More later. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Martin Kuzminski. I'm the CTO and founder of Roadcode. Uh, Roadcode is an open-source, multi-VCS source code management platform for Mercurial Git Subversion. Uh, it supports modern development workflows and has a focus on security. I personally, before Roadcode, had been solely solving big enterprise problems of managing source code for almost nine years. Along, I worked with several startups too. Um, I'm passionate about open source, code collaboration, modern development practices. Uh, Julian? Hello, I'm Julian Fode, and um, I came to version control as a user of it when I was an embedded software engineer. Um, used several different systems, and uh, as Subversion came along, um, after a while, I um, started working as a Subversion developer, and have been doing that for getting on for ten years now, with a special interest in merging. Thanks. Great, and I'm uh, Jason Materna, CTO of Assembla. Uh, Assembla is a uh, enterprise cloud version control provider. Uh, we're specifically in Subversion, uh, Perforce, and Git multi-VCS, um, and uh, you know, with a focus on security and uh, gaming and large files. So the agenda for today is going to cover where we're at with Subversion, you know, where Subversion is going, some exciting stuff coming down the pipe. Really looking at what. Subversion users are talking about and what clients are, are looking for with Subversion beyond uh, just the development roadmap. And then obviously going into kind of like the future and how cloud impacts uh, Subversion. Um, so I can say um, a little bit about the current state. Um, as you probably know, we're at 197. 197 and 196 were the two um, releases Subversion made this year. Both came out in the summer and both are fixing security issues and, uh, and uh, some uh, usability issues like uh, reduced memory use in large merge scenarios. And um, as an observation, we've uh, noticed, Martin particularly has noticed that uh, Subversion users tend to be um, people who will upgrade their client software quickly and uh, stay with recent versions, which is good to hear. Uh, summary of some of the um, other side of um, is, um, of course, merging as it has always been in Subversion it can be painful at times. On the positive side, people often find their their way through that, which is good to hear. Um, the Release cadence has been uh, rather low. We're now two years after the previous um, 
uh, the 190 came out about two years ago and, uh, and we're looking at uh, a 110 sometime soon. Uh, would you think what others like to say about some of those other points? Yeah, Julian, I was just curious, uh, you know, why do you think the, the cadence has been so low? I mean, you, you've been an active developer committer in the community for quite some time. I mean, uh, what, what, what was the, the major root cause, you think? I have, and uh, I've been around over the last several releases, and most of the releases have been about two years apart for the um, what we call minor releases, the, the fairly major, the 1.8, 1.9, and so on. Um, and that has sort of been the habit of the team and discussions about can we do a much quicker cadence have, have come up and some people have said yes let's and uh, basically it has never happened and contrary to in, on the on the converse what has happened is that uh, one or two of the releases making very big changes such as 1.7 when the new working copy format with just a single centralized .svn directory um, that took um, considerably more than two years and uh, yeah, so it's a sort of a habit that the uh, the team has got into. I would have to say. No, that makes sense. We'll we'll hit more of that. I think uh, later when we talk about the community. And so you know, one thing that I find interesting. I mean, Marcin, maybe you could uh, put some color on it. Is uh, you know, I call this the kind of the Google effect. You know, looking at you know, if you look at statistics, you look at the news, you look at the PR. Subversion is not you know the the you know it's not in the news it's not covered in the news as much as, as some other technologies and and and, uh, and solutions and so the question that really comes up is that you know there is a lot of subversion out there you talk to a lot of enterprises um, yes. and they may be you know underrepresented you know uh, in Google and so you know when you look Absolutely. at stats. Uh, just curious on what you're seeing and what you think about the whole underrepresentation from a stats perspective. Yeah, that, that, that's actually a really good question. Like, you know, we did a um, sub, uh, version control analysis uh, blog post, and we took all the officially available sources. And what actually is the truth is that, you know, Git or, or, or other distributed version control systems are pretty vocal over the internet, you know, stack overflow, etc. but subversion isn't. But the reality is, and if you're going to look at, for example, our customers, is that SVN is actually pretty popular. It's just not the the, the top uh, posts when you're going to read on Google on our blog post. It's a older version control system, but it's it's uh, it's being well documented. You know, there is a lot of power users, but definitely what we're seeing is that. The, all these statistics and everyone saying, you know, Git has 80% or more over the market. If you're going to look at big, big enterprises, which we, for example, uh, handle, the reality is subversion is much, much more stronger than anyone is saying over the internet. So definitely we can see this uh, from our, you know, customer usage, etc. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, Paul, Paul, what do you... Uh... What do you think about that? I mean, I, I know you're kind of on the, the consulting services side. Uh, is that something that you, you see as well? I know you, you obviously uh, offer different services across, you know, different repository technologies and chunk-based development. Just curious yeah. on your end. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of corporate users still using Subversion. Um, you know, it's, uh, it's part of a sophisticated uh, set of concerns as to which source control package you choose. Subversion has some strengths. Like a, you know terabytes of history in one repo and you know gigabyte sized files casually handled, which does sort of favour the media industry and other forms of creatives other than regular developers who deal with Java source. But there's many reasons why a company would want to stay in Subversion or wish it to take on some of the more, some of the features that they might envy from Git and others. Exactly. Yeah, and that tees us well into, uh, you know, moving along, you know, given the current state, you know, what's next for Subversion, right? And, you know, there's there's been obviously a lot of development, as Julian has mentioned, um, and, and obviously there's a lot of development on the roadmap, but I think, you know, uh, people that are using Subversion, you know, one thing that's exciting from my perspective at least is looking at the fact that not only is there active development, but there's this increasing momentum behind Subversion 
by various players, and I think it's going to uh, be really interesting to talk through the whole uh, the whole uh, panel here uh, as we get into uh, you know the the near future and the far future, right? So, Julian, why don't you tee us up on you know kind of the current uh, developer situation uh, with the future release? Yeah, great. Um, the Subversion community has been working on some features which are coming out in 1.10, which hopefully should be out in the next uh, two or three months, I'd like to guess. Um, as you know, with an open source project, the, the time schedule isn't, well, in this kind of project anyway, it isn't set in advance. Um, so these th three excellent features here that uh, um, all illustrate um, the power of open source working well, I think, because um, they've come from three different directions. The improved server-side performance um, is all about uh, an introduction of LZ4 compression, which is uh, faster, can much, much faster compression to calculate than the previously used gzip-based compression. Um, and that came about as a result of our Paul Hammond, in fact, uh, talking uh, on the uh, on the dev list about the issues. And one of the other developers, Evgeny Kotkov of Visual SVN, uh, went ahead and uh, implemented this. And uh, that will uh, help immensely with um, server-side uh, compression speed. So, yeah, Paul, did you did you have some? I mean, what was your motivation for kind of pushing that into the community? Yeah, I was uh, semi-secretly building uh, this technology that we'll introduce later on, and uh, some of my workloads were simply huge, like uh, uploading in a single commit a 10 gigabyte completely random binary file that would be uncompressible, provably. Um, and then seeing how Subversion performed, and it would obviously consume it and store it, and I could run that through revisions, but um, it was slower than the transfer of the same sized file straight to Apache without um, Subversion being involved, and I couldn't get to my square, uh, get that square in my head, so I consulted with the developers, and this was, this was the happy conclusion that, hey, let's do a faster um, compression algorithm on the storage side of Subversion server. Yeah. yeah, so that's really exciting. That's going to speed up um, um, anybody who's on a fast connection to their server, especially dealing with huge files. Um, second uh, thing to mention is conflict resolution user experience. This is um, for um, those running into conflicts during a merge, and it's something that uh, Stefan Sperling of uh, Elego in Germany has been working on uh, tirelessly for uh, for a long time to make subversion check the history for you to have a look at uh, what has what changes other people may have committed to, uh, um, uh, to that resulted in this conflict in the end and uh, thirdly path-based authorization improvements um, wildcard support has come in now this is very much an enterprise feature and indeed it was uh, requested uh, by Wandisco in uh, the past few years when they were employing some developers and uh, two of the uh, developers uh, have made this uh, ready for yeah go on um, I think Martin has got a an interest in in this feature so do you want to say something about it yeah absolutely you know from our side, because of our focus on security, we're actually very excited about the more flexible path-based authorization. Uh, we believe this brings the uh, even more flexibility to really, really advanced uh, capabilities of Subversion, and we're you know seeing that a lot of customers are valuing Subversion for that. And for example, they they say they won't use Git ever because just of this feature. So. You know, seeing this even being pushed forward, uh, from our perspective, we are really looking forward to develop some nice features around that. So, great, great for us, and uh, really exciting for for such a feature. Yeah, so that's a roundup of the uh, probably the three main features that uh, we will be coming out in 110. Great. No, I think uh, I like the path-based authorization. I mean, that's one thing that we've been really working around in a, at assembly I know is you know we've got a number of different features that that simulate you know path based authorization but it's really just a function of using existing functionality and, and using like the cloud and, and the web application overlay to kind of mimic you know the wild cards etc so it's great to see it kind of moving into the core so that you know that becomes faster and you know more optimized and stuff like that so very cool
So that brings us to a pretty exciting feature. Uh, you know, Julian, uh, obviously you were, um, you know, the main developer in this uh, realm, you know, talking about something that I think is pretty exciting for the subversion community. It's, it's really, you know, beyond what we just mentioned around the 110. This is something that uh, we at Assembla felt really strongly about. We brought in um, Julian as a developer really from the community and he's been really helping us push this forward. So Julian, why don't you uh, give everyone a, a feel for, for what's coming down the, the pipe here for, uh, for SVN users around uh, local operations. Yes. Um, so um, at Assembly we realized that um, people are wanting faster ways to use subversion and uh, especially one of the things that um, people envy in Git perhaps is the ability to uh, quickly set aside work on the local side and uh, um, work on, on a different change um, before switching back to the previous task and uh, shelving feature is something that's uh, been in the subversions wish list for many years and, and we're, we're now taking it on and say yeah let's let's do that so what we're going to create is, is a feature that's um, going to be ready to um, quickly and locally um, save your changes, revert your changes from your local copy, um, give it a name and uh, and then you can work on something else if you want and then, and then switch back. So um, it's uh, developed as an open source feature in conjunction with the open source community. Um, we're, we're contributing that. Um, as assembler, we will be um, releasing uh, a version that you can uh, download and, and test of the the sort of first iteration of, of this um, before it makes it into a uh, an official subversion release. So we should be, we should have something to um, show you very very soon about that. Yeah, great. Uh, and so why, what what's the main? I mean, you know, looking at uh, developers that are. Uh, obviously, subversion users or folks on the call that may not even be subversion users. You know, what, what's the you know from a productivity perspective? I mean, what, what's one of the main driving use cases here to have? Oh, good operators? point. Yeah, good point. Um, um, typically, when um, uh, if you if I'm uh, developing a bug fix and it's taking me hours or all day, um, and then quite often while looking at that, I will spot something that's relatively very easy to fix and obvious, but isn't actually part of that same bug fix. So I think, well, it'd be nice to fix that while I'm thinking about it. Uh, now I can, I can, uh, by shelving my changes I'm working on, that sort of clears the deck of the working copy, make the other quick fix, maybe commit it or save it separately, and then switch back to the previous change. A, a quick cue from me, um, is this the start of something that could be grown into a standardized code review system? Yeah, that's a very good point, Paul. Um, be by 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 saving the uh, a chunk of work, um, sort of like a patch, and and then if we can then as a an extension on top of this, build a way of transferring that um, saved um, shelved slice of work up to, for example, the server for other other um, developers to review it. Then that is certainly the, a good basis for for a code reviewing system. Cool. And Julian, it, it it also allows to work offline, right? I think this is a that's nice. a good point. That is, that is a key key part of, of this. You can that you can now, yeah, exactly, work offline. All no, the developers working in the airports will be happy. <laughs> that's it. Everybody will be uh, working offline. Exactly. Interesting. Well, that's great, guys. Uh, you know, skipping ahead as a segue into, uh, you know, is that something that the, 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 uh, the feature will evolve into? I think it, it really becomes an interesting discussion for the next slide, which is around, you know, the community uh, subversion as, as, a, as a community today, where it's come from, where it's going. I think it's super important for folks on the call, especially on the user side, to really understand, you know, what what are potentials here? Because I think you know if you look at statistics, there's been a large movement of open source development to GitHub. It is kind of the center of excellence for open source development, and you know, subversion uh, has a long life. You know, it needs to continue to evolve, continue to uh, innovate. Uh, 
uh, with conversations like this. And so I think it would be interesting to have the panel discuss, you know, what are some of the challenges to Subversion's community today? You know, why is it in a two-year cadence model when some others are in a monthly cadence model? You know, what, what could be done to, to improve that? Um, would, uh, would love to hear about that. Uh, maybe start with you, Paul. I know you've, uh, you've got some real perspectives on the GitHub model and open source in general. Or, or I can. Hey, yeah. let me let me, Julian, start. I I, I can say something on that. Um, the yeah, absolutely. GitHub is is where a lot of fast uh, project development work is happening, and, and it's a very exciting model for uh, for interacting. And so, you know, like a conceptual sense, yes, an open project like uh, like um, Subversion should be ready to embrace this kind of thing. So, you know, if we if if we were on GitHub. That really makes it easy to edit the source, and that's what every open source project should be aiming for. I think is to make it easier for any contributor to come along and click a button and say, "Hey, I want to edit this source code. I've got a good idea." Um, so, uh, is it? So, why is it? Well, it's mainly because GitHub offers these um, uh, easy communication features. Really, it offers the the advantages of, of easy code uh, distribution through Git, of course, but but these. Uh, the, the pull request buttons and things, uh, and the communication attached to them is a great way to do it. Um, Paul, do you have a word? Yeah, I'm, I'm inclined to agree. The Intelligentsia has moved to GitHub and kind of wants to do all its work there. I wouldn't see any shame in Subversion being hosted in GitHub, Git for development, uh, and in fact there is a Git mirror of Subversion that is mirrored onto GitHub, but the workflows aren't smooth. Um, I think in order to like double, treble, or 10x the numbers of contributions from the community, it would have to be more accessible than it currently is. And uh, uh, the magnificence of forks on GitHub is a thing that we just can't support within the Apache infrastructure with Subversion hosted in Subversion today. Yeah, you're right. The Apache Software Foundation, for, for whatever reason, um, uh, has sort of still um, insists on the development being conducted through uh, mailing lists and things and hasn't really invested in this kind of modern fast uh, communication infrastructure. So in principle, it'd be lovely to do that. Uh, getting there was going to take a bit of work, but yeah. Cool. Yeah. yeah, what do you guys all think about, you know, I've got this bullet here, SVN on SVN. I mean, you know, is there room for, for some kind of platform to come in and, and have SVN development uh, be done yeah. on SVN, so to speak. Uh, if, if I can comment on that, I think uh, having SVN on SVN platform would be a huge thing for the SVN community. You know, you would have your GitHub-like platform um, to, to develop things, and that could be a, a, a huge milestone for the community. And I think, you know, you know, who knows, with the solutions such as road code or assemblers, Maybe you know that could be a, a platform for for future development. Uh, I personally am not sure if GitHub is the best place, but I absolutely agree that you know a quick access and general ex uh, ease of of, uh, of putting patches is the is the thing that drives open source projects, and this should be the ult ultimate goal here for subversion. Yeah, I agree. What I want to reiterate your comment there that the assembler or um, road code might well be better alternatives to to github technically for this and uh, we definitely want to uh, um, investigate um, how that might work out right and and you know if, if we move to that type of model or kind of moved along there i think the roadmap you know speaking about this svn roadmap i just put some bullets here you know, the, there's been things on the roadmap here for, for a long time. I mean, some stuff's been open for more than uh, five years. And, and I think, you know, a roadmap having items on it for that many years, you know, it starts to kind of beg the question, what kind of roadmap is it? It's, it's you know, you got to attack a roadmap. So if, if we could bring uh, more people, more ideas, more bandwidth to the process uh, by opening up the, the experience, then you know things like on this list uh, could become more achievable at s scale, and I think that's really kind of the the future of Subversion. And so, you know, these some of these bullets that I'd love to hear about, uh, you know, how achievable could these be in the context of being able to gather more developers? 
Julian, maybe you start with your feature, the merging. I mean, you've been deep in that. It's a pretty sizable feature. Uh, yeah, I'd, uh, yeah, one of my sort of pet pet favorite wish feature, uh, which I have been looking uh, seriously into the technical possibilities of, is is how to make merging work better in, in Subversion. And uh, one of the main things that we could potentially do uh, as a quite a major change um, would be to adopt the, the DAG, the direct today cyclic graph model of merge tracking uh, as an instead of Subversion's um, merge info system. And that is, uh, it's a big simplification really. It says we can track uh, with DAG, we're tracking a merging of a whole branch at a time and we're not going to worry about uh, separate changes to individual files and letting those be tracked separately. So that's a different kind of um, uh, approach which um, the, the overall simplicity of it I think makes, up, makes for a lot more power and, uh, and uh, yeah. Great. Um, you know, is 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 the question around merging? I mean, is is it achievable if you had a, a, a large team? I mean, that's that's one question. The other team uh, question is, how important is merging uh, in a model where you know maybe there's other workflow processes with code review, et cetera, that are that are that, really yeah. tied to subversion. So yeah. it's uh, yeah, we don't take want subversion. Good point about um, the the workflows. Um, people are tending to use workflows with uh, much smaller changes done much more quickly today, which means that merging tends to be a, a more tr trivial exercise um, and therefore the, the importance of making uh, a merge sort of sophisticated is, is much less and, and that, that's a good thing, a good, a good development. Yep, so um, changing topics slightly towards uh, the other server side pieces. Merkle trees particularly interest me. My product uh, is using a Merkle tree on the client side. And I, you know, I discovered as I was developing this thing that Subversion has three, three quarters of the implementation of a Merkle tree on the, sub, the server side. And with a few more changes, it could be a formal Merkle tree, which is a, effectively a poor man's blockchain. Um, although there could be hours and hours of debate on that. Um, and I, I would wish to see this, the roadmap grow to include that piece and have been chatting to the developers towards that as well. Great. And you know, if I can comment some, some more server-side stuff, uh, especially around HTTP, um, we are a strong believer that you know, this is the future protocol uh, and we would like to see a better performance over HTTP protocol with subversion. It, it is unfortunately a little bit behind what uh, Mercurial or Git can present over HTTP protocol, but as I said, we really, really believe that uh, you know HTTP is the future, is the most secure. You don't have to open your SSH connections into your servers. So you know this being improved uh, could could really you know benefit uh, subversion. And when we are around HTTP topics. You know, um, integration is currently a big part of a lot of enterprises uh, where they have a lot of products that they would like to notify. Uh, so, you know, things like webhooks, better push notifications, this is a key to rich integrations and, uh, you know, having a better support for that would, would move the whole community, would probably allow people to create nice services on top of separation and improvements in this area uh, could also be very interesting uh, mm -hmm. where, as we can see this, yes. Thanks Machine. Yeah, and I just want to point out that uh, whilst the slide is titled DSVN Roadmap, um, a roadmap is um, generated by people coming to the project with ideas and we are bringing some ideas and, and, and these are them for us to discuss. These are some of the ideas that we have. So uh, input from, from you listeners and other people we talk to will, will help form the roadmap. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, exactly. No, it's, it's, there, there should be hopefully lots more bullets here uh, as, as, uh, as a community grows and that's kind of the idea, right? Um, well, that's great, guys. You know, uh, I think you know th this kind of gets me to the segue point around transitioning from uh, the user developer side uh, dichotomy of kind of the clients customers. So I think you know th there's there's a whole set of functionality that the developer community has been 
working on, uh, that we've discussed, uh, and then there's the end users, you know, how is Subversion being used in the enterprise, and, and what those use cases are, and, to, and sometimes they, they're very different uh, than, than, you know, the developers may expect, and I think, you know, obviously, uh, that's an important topic that we wanted to cover, you know, enterprises are demanding control, flexibility, and efficiency, and I think, you know, the great entry point of that dialogue is really around the development models in larger enterprises and and I'd like to have Paul talk about this concept that may or may not be familiar to some on the call which is this uh, trunk based development yeah. and uh, really growing popularity um, in uh, the enterprises and obviously beyond so Paul uh, your yeah. side. Um, it, it's always been bubbling there you know for 20 years as a branching model um, and but Google have really put it on the map as they started to talk about uh, the way in which they've uh, assembled all of their 25,000 developers in one trunk, one branch, in their monorepo, and uh, how they currently have 9 million source files in there, and I can't remember how many um, tens or hundreds of terabytes of history they have, but it's all in one place. And they say this helps them move faster than their competitors. And who are we to argue, so we should... Uh, read about it and maybe think about implementing ourselves and that's a lot of my incoming business actually is the consultancy to get um, a group from crazy branch models to trunk based development. Now it's um, you know on its own it's okay but it needs additional features for uh, things to work and scale. So what you need for 25,000 developers is a place where you can review the commits before they land in the trunk because obviously you can't guarantee that nobody's going to break it despite training and rigor and um, things like that. So you need effectively the pull request model and that's what Google themselves had actually pioneered internally uh, from about 2005 onwards, I can't remember the exact date. And Guido van Rossen, the Python creator, talked about it in a video about Mondrian, so you can Google for that one. Um, and that's a 2006 video and after that we had Garrett and a few others uh, sort of permeate the open source community as code review tools. Um, but with this one feature, you know, allowing um, machines and humans to review code before they land in the trunk, allows this to move forward at effectively one commit every two seconds in the trunk. And then, you know, they have different release rigor for each application, but all of them are sharing code in one in one trunk. And it's, it's super impressive to see this operate. And uh, Google have, in fact, uh, latterly spoken about it in a number of uh, videos, Rachel Podvin being the, the chief um, sharer of all of their internal advances around their trunk based developments in, in their huge monorepo. Yeah, exactly. And so how does, you know, one thing that's, that's uh, you know, on my mind is how does trunk based development and subversion, I mean, the, the two topics, you know, how do they interleave uh, from a software development perspective or just kind of a, an overall perspective? Yep. So a subversion would be your classic historical choice if you wanted to do a trunk based development approach for your team. Um, you know, there's nothing about Git that prevents it from being an admirable platform for trunk-based development and the GitHub, pull, uh, the GitHub flow branching model is actually pretty close to trunk-based development, but Subversion is the, the tool that was maybe carrying, um, carrying the flag for many years on this is what we'll use if we're doing trunk-based development, but as, a, as we said earlier and just now in fact, it's lacking the ability to review code commits in a cohesive place. Um, before they land in the trunk. But it's, it's a great choice, no, uh, no doubt about it. And it's also, frankly, a pretty good choice for a monorepo if you wanted to exceed the amount of files that Git could possibly hold, not just at head revision, but also in history. And that notwithstanding Git LFS as a, as a technology and, and submodules. Uh, Subversion is still a strong choice for large monorepo um, designs. Yeah, and, and how does... Um... You know, putting Git aside for a minute, how does the you know what what's missing from Subversion? We talked a little bit about what's missing uh, earlier, but you know, it, what what are those killer features that that would need to be present in a in a Subversion core, or a Subversion type service that would really bring it to be uh, kind of the choice uh, for a based development for a company wanting to do the Google style monorepo. The the only missing features are. Um, the stuff that uh, Julian's currently developing around the stashing and uh, checkpoints and uh, savable entities that are in your current working from your work, current working copy, and then the ability to grow that into a place where we could do code review before things are merged into the 
uh, or Martin Fowler would say, integrated into the trunk. Um, and we'd also perhaps want the ability to attach machines, bots, you know, the CI infrastructure to the same transient uh, pull request branches if, as they would have been in, in GitHub, but they could easily be these um, shelf sets. And we want to uh, do automatic verification of those. So actually that one turns out to be an investment because nobody's going to build that into Subversion. And it, it, if uh, Assembler or Road Code do it, it'll be part of the larger platforms, you know, to say we have CI built in. Um, and then even after all of that, it's still a big spend for the client because that means a lot of cloud infrastructure to do builds in. And you, you could say, well, you know, there's already CI services out there. Um, so th those are the things you'd need to do if you wanted to become a Google um, in terms of size of company and you wanted to base that on top of Subversion. If I can yeah. comment on, on one thing here just quickly, I, I think uh, having this on Subversion would be a huge thing. You know, we are seeing a lot of uh, our enterprise customers thinking about you know migration from Subversion to Git, but the costs of that are too high and having trunk-based development on Subversion could actually let people do modern development practices with Subversion and the cost of switch are far, far less than switching to different version core of system, which could be you know, huge savings for a company. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I, I have these conversations all the time with, with, you know, decision makers and, you know, for them a VCS is a VCS and switching is such a huge or potential risk for the business. And so, yeah, that, that value proposition for, for changing becomes very, uh, very difficult if it becomes just a technical one. But if you could, if you can hit those, those key points saying, hey, we have a modern software team, so we need modern workflows. Uh, let's stay on the, the bulletproof subversion. Uh, it, it, it makes a whole lot of sense, exactly. Great. Well, I just wanted to uh, remind everybody uh, on the panel, uh, obviously, and everyone listening, that uh, we've got uh, you know a number of minutes left still to cover. But I did want to remind everyone to post their questions. Uh, we're queuing those up for the uh, Q&A at the end. Uh, so again, it's just a quick uh, reminder, and uh, we'll keep going here. So panel, uh, this this is a great slide because it you know really gets into the insights of what everybody is seeing uh, in their respective camps, and uh, I'd love to have everyone kind of share, you know, what are the what are your organizations seeing uh, with your conversations with your customers with your clients? Uh, because I bet a lot of our what we're seeing is very common. We may be looking at different verticals, maybe different types of deployment models, et cetera. But I think there's a lot of commonality here when it comes to subversion. So it'd be, be great to cover those, uh, give some insights for the uh, for the attendees. Uh, sure. Like, you know, from our side, the key uh, feedback we are getting is that the enterprises look for even more secure and mature as subversion support inside the organizations. They want to implement modern development workflows into the existing SVN code. Uh, they're also very happy to see things moving around subversion, you know, like platforms like Road Code or Assembler being developed, but also looking at the possible migration paths from subversion into the other platforms. That's key takeaways from our side. Yeah, and, and from my point of view, uh, the things clients are asking for when they speak to me is they, they say they envy the GitHub code review system and pull request workflows. They also envy the local branching capability, you know, the ability, as Julian said, to juggle work. Um, and they want to push towards monorepo possibilities, and they need advice on how to do that, given their starting point. Um, so that's what I'm hearing back from my from my clients. Yeah, no, and, and, and on the assembly side, just quickly here, biggest thing we're seeing um, and, and we're talking about is really uh, source code security. So with, with all of the macro level environment that's happening, you know, moving security as left as possible, meaning right down to the source code level uh, where code starts. I mean, that that's a big resonating area for us where it's kind of the intersection of, of security and de development operations. Uh, so being able to basically understand vulnerabilities uh, at the point of start. So it's it's a big area that we're uh, we're looking at and uh, and we're investing in uh, in and around the subversion uh, customer base.
So that leads me into, you know, uh, what's happening now with Subversion, and and in terms of the the panelists that are on here, one thing that's exciting is that not only are we out there talking to clients, uh, having services, uh, selling products, etc. There is also a number of other initiatives going on uh, that are uh, specific to Subversion, and and I'd love to just have the the panelists. To, give a little pitch on, on what they're building or what they're selling, uh, what's resonating um, before we jump into the, uh, the question and answer session. And uh, so I'll start with you, Paul. I know you've got a pretty exciting announcement here for, for the attendees. Yeah. So I've been um, fascinated for years by Subversion's web dev capability and then considering web dev clients for Subversion that weren't Subversion's own technologies. Um, and I've pioneered some things like in the past, like a CMS about eight years ago. Um, now, in this particular instance, I've just made and I'm releasing today a file sync technology. So this is, uh, you know, we all know what file sync is. It's existed for ages. It's all the members of the team will share legal documents or account documents or PowerPoints or various things, and they'll shuttle their way around a number of uh, colleagues' C drives, if we think of Windows. So I've, I've got this new thing. It's a single Python script. Um, it's called SubSyncIt. Um, because of Subversion, it can handle terabytes of history and individual files that are huge, like you could store movies in this. And uh, you know, I think it's designed for office use, Excel, Word, and PowerPoints and the like. And it's open source, so it means the cost of acquisition is, is cheap, although people may still want to speak to me about something like Trello integration. So imagine you're in Trello and you've got some cards in a swim lane and Somebody who's a boss figure moves a card between two swim lanes or updates one card to say, uh, Wilma's going to edit this spreadsheet, and all of a sudden the spreadsheet arrives on Wilma's C drive for her workflow. So we can get away from the download hell, you know, the clicking of items from mail attachments and all like, which allows us to see uh, our, our uh, hard drives littered with versions of the same document and not ever sure which one is dominant or canonical. Yeah, it's super exciting. I mean, uh, one question I have have is uh, you know it's it's you saying it's a single Python script uh, on the client how does it uh, what's the server side look like is this thing kind of ready to be plugged into the cloud for subversion yep. or uh, on-premise or yeah so thank, thanks for that catch yes I should have mentioned that um, it's it's supposed to plug into a, a, your subversion so the one that you have already installed you'll need to make a couple of configuration settings and I've gone ahead and tested it with uh, road code and assemblers uh, subversion interfaces to my satisfaction um, so it doesn't require a server-side install, it just requires a config setting, two extra config settings in the WebDAV uh, section of Apache's configuration. Cool. No, that's great. Uh, super excited uh, to check that out. So, Marcy, what are you guys up to at RoadCode? Uh, thanks, Ethic. Uh, so, RoadCode is, is an on-premise solution and has added subversion support as a third backend after Mercurial and Git. Um, so our end users are getting things like you know, secure code reviews, service integrations, web hooks, issue tracker integrations, uh, rich access control, basically you know, a rich enterprise ready product. Um, and therefore we are seeing a big interest in our platform with one reason being it, it brings an open source feature rich product that supports subversions. There aren't you know, many like those in, in, in the market. So we're actually seeing a big spike of, of uh, subversion users. Um, we're starting to invest even more into subversion currently uh, because we believe it's here to stay with those exciting uh, upcoming changes as we you know, discussed here. Uh, uh, it will stay future proof having, you know, Paul present his solution, uh, having uh, close to trunk based development release soon. We believe it's going to you know, play a major role soon. So that's why we're keep investing in, in subversion support into road code. Um, and, and finally, we're, re, we're also excited seeing some uh, subversion community contributing things like docking, Docker containers uh, with road code because they wanted to have an easier subversion support internally in their organization, you know, on, on, on premises behind the firewall. So uh, that that's shortly what, what you know, what we're doing, what we're planning to do around subversion. And just to highlight again, really, really exciting to see movement as soon 1.10 release. Uh, 
that's that that's that's great. Uh, Piacek. Yeah, no, exciting stuff, and and like I said, we're we're uh, we're working on a lot of exciting stuff as well. Uh, you know, one of the key areas for for Assembla is is really uh, looking at the code review flow, the, the the process in and around handling merge requests, in app conflict resolution, so you don't have to go back to the terminal; you can do it right there in, in the web app. You know, even being able to make on-the-fly commit and edit changes during code review, so you don't necessarily have to resubmit as a developer. You can basically uh, make the change right in the web app and, and commit that back into uh, into the branch or trunk. Is something we're really committed to. And and I, and I wanted to touch definitely on something that again I uh, mentioned earlier around source code security. You know, this concept of being able to offer a health check before the data comes into Assembla. And then having a continuous commit level uh, health ch uh, check process, so that you know when developers pull in a new library that is going to allow them to deliver a feature four times faster, uh, you know, ensuring to that that library doesn't have any vulnerabilities with it. You know, uh, an area that's I think a little bit new when it comes to native uh, VCS uh, experience, but I think it's something that that's uh, going to be interesting for us. So, um, again, we're we're looking at that as well for uh, for the enterprises. Sounds great. Well, great guys. I mean, uh, you know, this, this kind of gets us to uh, we're about 45 minutes in, uh, so right on schedule. Excellent. And uh, you know, we've got uh, plenty of time for Q and A. And uh, this is basically where I wanted to kind of uh, Take a look at the queue of questions that have come in, and uh, you know, so we're we're just getting those organized. And so while that's happening, uh, I'm going to tee it off with my favorite question that I uh, answer on social media, private conversations all the time, which is, you know, it's 2017, uh, why subversion? So we'll start with you, Paul. Um, so you know, I think. Uh... It's it's always been a viable choice. It's just that I think the attention was taken away from Subversion by Git, and if if Subversion can be inspired by the pieces of that entire experience that uh, you know make it compelling, then Subversion survives another 20 years. And it's uh, not is you know as Martin says, it's not going to go away. It's it's got a, a whole bunch of features that almost nothing else has from the open source community, and it's really compelling. Yeah, for me, Julian, I, I I have it installed on my home network, and it just works, and it carries on working, and it stores large files. Yeah, I mean, SVN is still huge on enterprise users, gaming, automotive industries. Uh, if people are tweeting about it, it doesn't mean it it it's not popular. Uh, it's it's still a very good product. It can handle terabytes of data like no other open source existing uh, version control system. And, you know, we're almost sure it's going to uh, stay. That's why we do investments in supporting subversion in our product. Oh, that's great. Uh, that's great, guys. Um, so we've got a couple questions here. And uh, the one I'm going to start off with here is, uh, came in first, which is really talking about TFS. So, you know, uh, it's a different repository technology. But the question was, uh, TFS is great workflow. Um, it says, company uses Assembla. It'd be nice if you could associate check-ins to a story number. This would help reduce friction in terms of dev process. So the question is, are there services like Assembla or Road Code that allow code review process hooks? And so, um, Maybe just kind of cover off uh, Marcin, and, and then I could hit it. You know, what capabilities you guys have in terms of uh, having process hooks automated into the code review process? So generally, you know, because we support multiple version control systems, our system is written in, in a way it works the same way for Git as it works for subversion. It means we have a eventing system that catches all the communication because we only support HTTP 
for subversion, but that allows us to have a unified interface when you can set up webhooks that triggers, for example, continuous integration builds um, or any other system. And this is actually very, very popular. And we have already heard some feedback from subversion users that they actually started to use this as the same way as they use it for a Git service, uh, which is a big thing for them because they haven't been, uh, you know, able to do so. So we have uh, uh, post push webhooks, and they can actually also be used for you know, triggering automated builds, code check, code quality, even code review in it at some point. Right. I think at you know, uh, without repeating what you just said, I think the key is automation, right? I mean, there's there's all these uh, integrations to the Jenkins workflows and stuff like that. So um, there are web hooks. Uh, to answer the question, there are web hooks uh, in, in, and hooks in general in uh, all the modern platforms. Definitely road code assembler. So you can orchestrate, you know, pre-code review, after code review, after merge, post merge. You know, if you want to kick things off. Uh, to be able to change uh, a status of a ticket or, or, or other things, as, as was mentioned in the question, uh, those are definitely uh, available in the solutions. Great, so that brings me to another question uh, I have here, which is, uh, why should I use Subversion over Perforce if uh, I'm a gaming studio? So I think this one's interesting. Uh, you know, gaming comes with uh, the cachet of large binaries, large files. Uh, it's it's a natural conversation here, so um, why don't you kick this one off, Marcin? I know you've got some uh, customers that are at game studios. Um, uh, well, you know the the the, the obvious things is costs uh, because uh, you know you can use Subversion for free, um, but moving the costs aside, you know I think having a open source solution is also something. You know that people like to have. Uh, you don't have any vendor lock-in, like in case of Perforce. Uh, also, you know, we just discuss uh, great improvements coming from the community, and this is kind of a driven by community, not by a company uh, like Perforce. So, uh, you know, we 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 think that that that's that's really really important here. Um, I, I'm not sure what is your perspective here. Yeah, I'll let Paul. I think uh, Paul, you may have something uh, to yeah. say about it. Oh, yeah. So um, you know, I'm a long-term user of Perforce too, and I, I, you know, I like it as much as I do uh, Subversion. And, and Google had a Perforce for uh, up until 2012, and I saw I saw how that operated, and it was like, um, you know, it, it reset horizons for me. So I think the difference is in cost in the end, because um, uh, high throughput companies are probably going to be comfortable with whatever price they have to pay to lock in that high throughput. Um, I think the differentiator to me is Perforce has a binary protocol, um, custom stuff, and here I am having bolted something onto Subversion by using the WebDAV protocol and then reverse engineering everything the Subversion commands were doing themselves, and ended up with a like a little utility solution for this file sync technology. And I, I, I like the openness of the Subversion development platform. I like the smallness of the server deployment with the ubiquity of that WebDAV interface. So those, that's the big differentiator for me. But you know, if, if I was a company with large binaries, I, I would be equally happy uh, putting my main assets in either Perforce or Subversion. Exactly right. I mean, Perforce has a strong pedigree in uh, the gaming industry. Uh, you know, it's a great solution. And, and I think at Assembla, it's, you know, without repeating what you guys had said, it's it's really around, you know, we're running uh, Assembla's SVN solution for gaming studios over SSH. And, uh, you know, it, it tends to perform, it basically turns it into a binary protocol at that point, uh, automatic compress compression, et cetera. So we found or some of the studios have found that the performance either meets or exceeds per force uh, in the cloud, and uh, that ends up being, uh, in addition to the cost, the right solution. So I think I think you guys are right. It's it's both both have their strengths, uh, both great solutions, and uh, but there is something about the kind of the openness uh, aspect of 
of Subversion, I think, is, is also appealing. Yeah, openness is really important. Like you having guys like us build things on top of uh, Subversion while we actually thought about Perforce, but because of openness of protocol, we decided Subversion, and this is the best decision ever. But, you know, it just builds more trust around that tool. Yeah. So it, just... it is important. And there's one more thing to what Marcin just said. You know, it's a single process. It's, you know, all the subversion operations are done within the, the Apache process, and that's like the smallest Dockerized thing you could possibly deploy if that was what you wanted to do. So it's, uh, you know, it, there's nothing too much about this as a technology choice, and there's plenty of things that are not at all too little. Right. Exactly. So we got time really for one more question, and and that's uh, you know, question came up is you know why invest in subversion if Git rules the market? Uh, you know that's a pretty short question, but you know what's y'all's perspective on that? Martin. Um. Yeah. It's 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 basically it's the same thing as why subversion in two thousand seventeen. I mean there is a huge amount of people using Subversion and they cannot switch their 10,000 people organization just to Git. They, the cost would probably kill the company. So, you know, there is a huge potential and everyone wants to do agile development and everyone wants to optimize and make their development modern. So, you know, Subversion is actually a great place to invest. To, to improve those areas because it's going to here to it's going to stay there are exciting things going on around subversion and uh, from our side it's it's a good investment because you know it's going to be here and we are actually seeing some new customers uh, choosing subversion because of the performance uh, security features handling large files oh. yeah so everything Marcin said uh, and I'll go a bit more into security. The, the ability to set, uh, set different read and write permissions for individuals or groups at any directory in any branch is super powerful. And uh, many corporate customers will use the hell out of that one. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And and I think it's, for us, uh, quickly here, it's, it's really around, you know, there's a pressure for, for a lot of clients to kind of go faster, be more agile, get connected to modern tools, uh, workflows, experiments. So if you take the rock solid subversion, but give it the ability to be modern, to integrate with, with those, those newer applications, then, you know, you're really running the best solution of all. Uh, you're not needing to switch VCSs just to take advantage of the new tools. You're actually uh, doubling down on your core mainframe, your core, you know, critical asset, as they call it, uh, but you're bringing in uh, some of those uh, advantages, so absolutely. And with that, um, I just wanted to uh, say that we've kind of hit the time mark, so I'll, I'll get Rachel back in here to do some uh, fun housekeeping, but uh, wanted uh, to thank everybody, obviously, uh, and the panelists for, uh, for their time today. I think it's been a great session. Again, thank you. Thanks, thank everyone, you. for joining us today. Thanks to our panelists. Um, we covered a lot of ground today. Um, and if you ask me questions that we didn't get to, we're going to follow up with you directly. Uh, also, again, we've recorded today's session, and we'll be sending it out. Um, we hope that you'll be able to share that content with your colleagues that, have, that weren't able to join today. Um, thanks again, and stay tuned for more. We hope to see you next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye.